That water. I mean, I'm not going to use it. Okay. Just for a. Hello. Oh. Hey, Con. I think the clock, clock is slow. Because <laughs> <laughs> never slow. I think my watch is fast. Everybody says that. I. <laughs> do you. I do so many of these meetings, and I've I've given up showing the clock because everybody <laughs> says it's it's wrong. Well, there's my clock, right? <laughs> I was smack on half past two. Are you all ready, Con? Yep, I'm grand. I'm you grand. got your clean underwear on? Oh, yes. <laughs> That's right. That's my mother always says you must have clean underwear in case you're knocked down yeah, by a bus. Yeah. Wash behind your ears. <laughs> That's, the one. That's the one. That's the one. Always wash behind your ears because I didn't do it once and I got myself into huge trouble. Smile for me. My Diane. I'm in heaven when I. And here we are for another week. Yeah. So, Con, do you want to tell us what's on the agenda this week? I yeah. know it's exciting because uh, I'm re one particular thing I'm really excited about. Yeah, and I know. I think I know what that is. Uh -huh. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, what we got up to this week again. And uh, Dex had some time in Victoria's garden, so looking forward to that. And. Uh, then Deck's masterpiece, which is I'll Walk With God. So I'm looking forward to seeing that because he's been working like mad to get that together. Yeah. Well, we both have actually doing some videos and all sorts of things. <clears throat> and then um, we'd be asking best house, best house, which the best house I ever stayed in or lived in or anybody lived in. <laughs> And then we'd be asking John his usual question. So then my ancient videos, I look forward to them every week. I believe it's a cracker this week. So I'm looking forward to that. <clears throat> um, then Dex's speaking career, you know, he's very keen on Toastmasters. So he's letting us into some of his secrets on there. And then we have our competition as usual and you get to talk to us and then at the end of the show, I shall be singing Diane, Diane, which was our first number one hit in 1964. So uh, looking forward to all that coming up in the next half hour or so. So what, Carl, did, you what did you get up to this week? What did I? Well, the usual. Uh, uh, usual? <laughs> out in the garden, potting plants, uh, picking some strawberries. Got loads of strawberries now this year. And uh, that's very good. I'm very disappointed with gooseberries. So gooseberries, not so good. Usually they're laden, my bushes. But this year, only one half a punnet is all I got out of it. It's ridiculous, ridiculous. But the potatoes are going mad. It's going mad up there in the, in the raised beds. <clears throat> so I must show them to you one day. I'll, I'll take a video of, uh, <laughs> of my raised beds and show them to you. So... Uh, that, that's good. What what were you up to this week, Dak? Wow. The usual. You kept me very busy this week. <laughs> In fact, I finished at uh, 3 o'clock this morning. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I've had a lovely week. Um, I adore music, as you know. I, I love music and putting it together. I'm very artistic, so that, that was good. But the... The one highlight of my week was I managed to go over on Tuesday. I go over on Tuesday and Friday and do an afternoon's uh, gardening. Well, from five o'clock, really. And I sneak a crafty beer without anybody notice, noticing. And I love that, sit there in the sunshine. And that's gorgeous. But tonight, today was, uh, or Tuesday was very special because I knackered my back. I don't know how I did it. And I've had... I've just about, this is the first morning I've woken up when I've been virtually normal, virtually normal. But let me show you exactly what we got up to in Victoria's garden. What have we here? Isn't this crazy? 
we're all told not to feed seagulls and the cats don't mind at all but look what's happened to poor oh what's his name this is david right, isn't this, it? this david one's Seagal. jonathan that's jonathan eating at the moment and then there's Stephen Seagal. Some some lovely person has covered him in blue ink or blue paint or paint. blue something. The poor it thing. It doesn't look like ink. Uh, it's ink, I think. But they both come every day. Normally they'd come in my back door, but I've now put a curtain there so they can't get in. But the cat's just... Yeah. Excuse the state of the garden. It's been neglected for four months. Look, there you go. I know, it's but it's going to be beautiful now. It's going to be beautiful. My gardener's it? back. The gardener's back, yeah. Got my gloves on, got everything on. I can't believe the cats though. Yeah, there we go. Go, go. Let's but go you on. are going against everything that's said. I don't care. Do I'm not an, feed seagulls. I'm an animal lover. And look, there's Stephen. Poor Stephen. Come on then. Come have some food. Oh. oh, there he is, over there, covered oh, in blue. Good. He looks lovely, actually, like that. He looks quite beautiful. Yeah, the cat, it's all like a bit, it's animal farm, it's animal, animal farm here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny, because he's behaving timid, the cats are, look. Yeah. Gar, gar leave him alone. Their instinct, yeah. <laughs> Move over. Right, is that one? Look at the pair of them, Jonathan and Sooty, <laughs> eating together. Have you ever seen anything like that? And then I caught a mouse. Humane mouse trap, um, inundated with mice. We've caught seven in the past week, and we put them across the road. And look at him. Isn't that lovely? Can you see him? It's lovely. Look at the <laughs> amount of rubbish around him. Look at him there. That's a close-up. Isn't that gorgeous? How could you hate mice? Wow. How could you hate mice? And I use humane traps, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, humane traps, and I bring them across the road on their holidays. <laughs> and I th now I've got seven across the road in the bushes. Uh, I hope they start the community. But they reckon that you've got to take them more than three miles away, three miles to stop them coming back. Okay. But the evil people say, and I used to say, just kill them. Mm, it's a bit nasty. I've, I've never killed anything. Well, I have actually, but uh, no, I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it. So, Con, yeah, what are we well, going to do next? Well, uh, I was just going to tell you about my, my rats in the garden. Yeah? <laughs> Cara put some, uh, some poison down, and we haven't seen them lately, so I reckon they're they're gone. I hope, hope they're gone anyway, because they're, they're a bit dangerous, you know, if they start coming into the house and not spreading disease oh, gosh, and all yeah. those things, you know. Anyway, uh, well, are we going to see your masterpiece, which can be oh, yes. 3 o'clock this Ladies morning? Ladies and gentlemen, strap yourselves in very <laughs> carefully and be prepared especially John Leyland and Lynn, and Lynn's been expecting this as well, but listen Strap yourselves in for this because this is rather special. I'll walk with God from this day on His helping hand I lean upon This is my prayer My humble plea May the Lord be ever with me There is no death, though I am so dim. There is no fear when I'm near to Him. I'll Never, never, he 
Now you can applaud. Now you can applaud. Nearly a standing ovation, Can't One day we'll get a standing ovation. That's really good. Thank you very much, everybody, for that. I really appreciate it. Very that good. was amazing, says Carol Furs and John Hutchinson. That was splendid, guys. I always thought your, you singing it should have been the theme tune to Stars on Sunday. It was, but it was Harry Seacombe, I think, singing it, if my memory serves me right. So, Con, tell us what's happening yeah. next. That song haunted me all my life. Because, <laughs> uh, every, every party, every gathering we went to with my mother, she used to say, get up and sing my favourite song. And I was forced to stand up and sing I'll Walk With God. But that was what Irish parties were all about. Everybody joined in. If you couldn't sing, you'd said a poem or something like that. But it was <laughs> great My, uh, Con, my, my father, so do you remember my, fav- my father's favourite? Oh, yeah. I remember, uh, I'm just, we, sorry, I'm looking, not looking at the camera because I'm busy we, doing things. He used to sing a song, and it was. And I've tried my best <laughs> to find it. In fact, I rang a very, very famous worldwide tenor. You know, does all the classical stuff, all the albums and everything. Andrew Bennett, lovely friend of mine. He's a Toastmaster as well, by the way, as a public speaker. And uh, he didn't know of it. But if anybody knows, I'll sing. It's I'm drinking. Drinking, drinking, I'm drinking wine and water, and if I never water again, I'll be drinking, drinking, D O I N K I N. Go on, go on. G. <laughs> I'm just turning on to view now. Just you know. yeah, well, there's a few clapping. A few clapping. Con, I'm getting a few claps. I'm getting a few oh, claps. Man. I'm getting a few claps. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, my father was a bass singer. He used but to listen, um, seriously, if anybody listening knows that song, knows of it, would you please, please, please get in touch with me? Because I want to. I want to actually trace it down, and then I want to actually do it properly sometime. I might even record it. You never know. Oh, anyway, the, the next question I wanted to ask you, Dick, was, <laughs> what was the what's the best house, best house you you ever lived in? Because I know you have <sighs> quite a few. I've had loads, could... loads of houses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I always um, reckon to. I wanted to move every five years because I reckon that was the because I'm a minimalist as regards housing. I don't like clutter. I hate clutter. Unfortunately, my wife Sandy is a bit of a clutter freak. Uh, she hoards everything. Uh, but the idea of moving every five years then allows you to have no clutter because you've got to literally clear out your house every five years. Love that. The house I had, uh, obviously, to Connell Park, I loved in 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 Chicor. Uh, 
then when I came to England, I had a, some nice flats. But they were typical flats that you have when you've got no money. So they weren't really good, no, not very good at all. Archway, and then we had one in Wilson, I think it was, some, somewhere like, like that. The first house I had was in Boston Place, and I had a designer friend of mine, an architectural designer person, interior design guy, come in, and he did it, and it was rock star. It was rock star. He had lines. Oh, that was lovely. The... Do you remember it, Con? Do you remember it? It's just off, it was just off Baker Street, yeah. That's right. Uh, the, the, that uh, it was in um, the Boston Place. Boston Place, and strangely enough, about four doors away from the Beatles studio, which never ever gets a mention. Con, did you know that? Never gets a mention. And I used to go out of my out of my house into the car and drive down, and there were all the musicians I knew hanging about in the street. And they used to reckon it was the greatest gig in the world because the Beatles had just come there when they when they fancied it. You know. Oh. I think we, we've got an idea, we'll just go along. So the musicians were paid to be sitting around waiting for them all day long. But the best house I ever had was Pear Tree Barn. Do you remember that one, Con, with the swimming pool? Swimming pool in the courtyard and stables all around that the courtyard. Lovely. That fountain yeah. in, the, in the swimming pool. Two, two barbecues. So what was the best one you think you've ever stayed in? Well, I've, I've stayed in quite a few. Like you, well, we were raised in Tickhornel Park in Inchicore in Dublin. And that was a lovely house. I enjoyed that. Lovely back garden with the workshop in the back, which me, my father used to mend things in, in the back garden. <clears throat> and, Just putting uh, in sure. con, because John Leyland asked the question, did Lloyd Grossman look at, yes, he did my place. Uh, and he wasn't very, he said it was, it, it seemed like it was owned by an upmarket Irish builder. <laughs> With, uh, uh, he did uh, your, your place as well, didn't he? He did, yeah, he did Newhall. And uh, apparently everybody that was done by him was done later by a burglar, including my house. I burgled about two months after after the, they come along with the cameras. Yeah. I'm sure they, they look around the house and see what's worth stealing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but John, John Leyland, open your mic there, John. Tell us about what do you think? What was the best house, flat or whatever that you ever stayed in or lived in? Well, I... Uh, I was very lucky because I got to stay in New Hall a couple of nights. Yes. So. Ooh, lucky old <laughs> you. Did you make the bed? I hope you made the bed. <laughs> um, I can't really remember much after 3 a.m., to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> because Kay, bless her, caught me off guard one night. I I'd, I'd popped up to say hi for the evening and she said, what time are you working tomorrow? I said, oh, I'm off tomorrow. She said, right. You're staying and you're having a drink, and that was it. <laughs> well, six drinks later, I bet it was a ten. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, she was great, great hostess. Okay, well. John, John, honestly, what was the best house you think? Was it your childhood home or? Um, yeah, the childhood home was 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 brilliant it was very close to the railway station at Lancaster so it was easy to get a train to Blackpool and um, I lived I have a little flat in Wanstead when I lived in London which was good although it was a bit of a trek on the central line out from from uh, the place I was working at the time um, but I also had a, a two-bedroom stone cottage in Howarth in West Yorkshire I wasn't far from Con in fact Con came there I think uh, yeah I did actually yeah, yeah probably, and probably. Uh, but when I retired from the police I just wanted to get back home to Lancashire and, and after a, a couple of poor decisions I've ended up in Cleveland's now which I'm very happy with so lovely well, and I never got rid of the clutter. The clutter moved with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely, John. It's lovely to hear that. And we're getting on now to your favourite part is the films. Are you ready, Con, to do your uh, voiceover? Yes, so long, as my, so long as my Wi-Fi works and I can see the thing. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll save you. Just, just tell me if... 
anything doesn't work and I usually can fix it but it's one of the 13 things you've got to do to get Zoom to work properly. So listen, have a look at this. Wow. Oh, wow. Now there's a memory. That is on the film set. That was Billy Fury there. And we're re filming I Got a Horse. If anybody has seen that film. And that was the set for, he's got the whole world in his hands. Yeah, all dancing. And the the girls hated that. Because There's Billy they, Fury. Yeah, it's Billy. Because they had to dance on grass. And they, they'd rehearsed on, on the normal floor, you know, for wooden floor. And now having to dance on grass, which they, they hated. Oh, oh dear. Yeah, we used to fly down, that was filmed down the Great Yarmouth, and uh, we we were actually in summer season in Blackpool, so we had to fly down every week to do some filming, and then fly back again to the show in the evening. Wow. Now, I got a horse. Fred Empney was in that film. The Man the Burry. Can I have your autograph, sir? Yeah. yeah. And the food, the food, food was the most important part of the day. Look at the food. The food was always gourmet food, and it is always gourmet food on every film set. And there we are flying back to, I think it was Blackpool. Yeah. And filming was, under yeah. and over. Yeah, that was her. There's Brian Savory, I'm our road way. manager, with your lovely wife, Kay. And we were on site there doing some filming and then we had uh, amazing there's the wives and there's, there's the cameras proper film cameras look at that yeah Lovely. and that is Jack Smithers yeah sitting well, in a car and that's you in, in full makeup there that's right you worked on your face and everything <laughs> suppose we were supposed to be digging the uh, at under, underground tunnel and there's Tommy Cooper on the Royal Variety Show. And the uh, Cossacks, the mom's favourite act. She always loved the Russian Cossacks, and they were on every blooming Royal Variety Show. Yeah, higher were. and higher and higher and higher. Yeah, they're very fit, very fit. So you can do that, Con, can't you? Oh, yeah, in my dreams. <laughs> 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 but uh, my video's frozen, I'm afraid, so I'm just looking at oh, you. Oh, it's frozen. Yeah. Okay, so the guy spinning around. Oh, look, I wish I could do that. And there's Tarbuck. Tarbuck was the mainstay of every Royal Variety Show and the beer, the shadows. And that's John Rostel, Rostel, who is one of the bass players. They were all changing bass players. There's yeah. lovely Cliff in all his glory. Cliff Richard, in away. Hands, yeah. as he always does. Yeah. Back by the shadows. Yeah. I always, fantastic to get I always wondered about Cliff with that type of dancing he did because it always made his legs look bowed, bow-legged. <laughs> I could never understand why he insisted on doing those movements. Lovely guy, Cliff. And there's this was obviously at the rehearsals. It wasn't the real show. And there is uh, David Jacobs. David Jacobs, the DJ. Yeah. We can't remember this guy's name, Con, can we? Well, if you, you do the routine to it on the phone, on the phone. <laughs> oh, dear. Who's that? I'm frozen. Oh, you're frozen. Well, yeah. that, uh, there's... Looking at you uh, on the film set. Oh, I see, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, there's the Tiller Girls on an, yet another show that we did. And yeah. there's Gil Dover. He Gil did Dover. nearly every show. And this, we cannot remember her name. But she was on practically every show we did. It's very frustrating, actually, when your your Wi-Fi is not working properly. Yeah. And um, mine, I, mine comes in on a on a telephone wire, not not like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I th think they bring it in in the boot of a car, Con. I think so. Yeah. Very very bad Wi-Fi. Of course, I'm in the middle of a farm here, so. Mm. Well, there you go. You'll probably be the last one to ever ever get Wi-Fi properly. I know, it's very annoying. <laughs>
very, very annoying. I'm thinking of putting it in myself, you know, digging a hole and or digging a trench. <clears throat> no, Con, let's get on to the next bit. And that's uh, love of my life. I've uh, been involved with Toastmasters International now for 14 years. Yeah. Had all the highest awards from them. And I, uh, I love public speaking. Love public speaking. I adore it. I won many, many competitions and that. And nobody ever gets to see me actually do my stuff, strut my stuff, as they say, Lynn and John and John Hutchinson and all the gang and Helen Hardy. But would you like to see, John, me strutting my stuff as in speaking? It's not hugely good quality, but it is very interesting. And it just gives you an, an inkling into what I do at a, a typical club night. So here we go. Would you please put your hands together for Deb Klosky? Um, <laughs> where am I? <laughs> what? Yeah, where am I? Eastbourne, mate. Eastbourne. 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 Yes, it's, it's, I'm Charles Jones, by the way. I'm 87. Good. And, and going strong. I, I think, I think I'm in an old age home. <laughs> or I could be a baby because they get me up at seven o'clock in the morning. They wash me, they bath me, they put a natty on me, and then they start all this gibberish, all this wee stuff. Did we have a nice sleep last night? Did we eat our breakfast? Did we want to go for a walk this afternoon? And did we do our wee sample this morning? I thought I'd have a laugh. And this morning, I got some apple juice and put it in the container and gave it to her. She looked at it and she said, oh! We have a very cloudy wee sample here. I said, no problem. I'll do another one. <laughs> this all started when they brought me to this home. And they expected me to go down into this room with all these old people. An old codger in the corner. I kept playing the piano. Now, I want to play the piano. Well, they tell me I've got to wait until he, till he dies. <laughs> it all started when they said I'd got old timers disease. <laughs> now, stairs. Was I going up the stairs or was I going down the stairs? The bath. Was I getting into the bath or was I getting out of the bath? The room. Was I going into the room or was I coming out of the room? There was something on telly last night about Alzheimer's disease. I forget now what it was. <laughs> oh yeah, it, it was about old people, old folk. They're the biggest carrier of AIDS. Hearing aids, band aids, walking aids, medicinal aids. Is there anything good about Alzheimer's, you ask? Well, I think there is, because every time you go into a room, you meet new people. Every time you sit down for a meal, you have a new experience. Every time you watch a film, it's a new film. The trouble is, I started to forget things. For instance, my wife didn't talk to me for three weeks because I forgot to open the car door. I panicked. I just swam to the surface and went running for help. Then I didn't speak to her for three weeks. Well, I didn't like to interrupt. She called me Spider-Man for weeks, just because I couldn't get out of the bath. <laughs> you see, there's nothing wrong with being old, I think. I'm 
just old. I just wonder that people ever hear of that fantastic experiment that six medical students did in Bronx University. They went out and they gave 3,000 old timers parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme. Just like the Simon and Garfunkel song. Do you know what happened? After three months, 98% of them had remarkable improvement in their condition. They brought the results of their experiments to Pfizer. And Pfizer said to them, oh, this is remarkable, the results. But what we're going to do is we're going to analyze parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, and find out what the active ingredients are that are making all these people be wonderfully healthy again. And then we're going to make a drug. We haven't heard of it since. I say you should exercise the brain, exercise your body. Let me do something useful. I can cook. I can clean. I can look after the grandchildren. I can do the garden. I can paint. I enjoy all the silly, stupid, soulless jobs that nobody else will do. I want to be valued, not vilified. I want to be useful, not useless. I want to be respected, not ridiculed. They let me out sometimes and I go to Chinese restaurants. Isn't that wonderful? To see all the elders polishing glasses, dusting, cleaning, talking nicely to the customers. And I go to an Italian restaurant, there's the mama and the papa, always at the till, looking after things. Then I go to Ireland, where still to this day, the oldest person in the family is the most respected and the most powerful. He owns the farm, he owns the land, he owns the property, and he is respected. So I think I'm in this old age home because... Nobody wants me. The old people don't matter anymore. What will come to you? The old clock on the wall? The slow hand of time? So I wander back to my home. And I'll leave you with a message. Not one message. Three messages. Ladies, life is too short to dance with ugly men. <laughs> men, you know you're in serious trouble when the doctor can't pronounce what's wrong with you. <laughs> and to everybody, life is like a toilet paper roll. The closer you get to the end of the roll, the quicker it goes. <laughs> If I can find my home, I'll go to it. Where is my home, by the way? You know, I love playing golf. And in, in America now, for, for the pros, they have a new competition for all the, the over 90s, over 90s, wow. And uh, the prize goes to the one who can remember what score they had. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. oh, by the uh, way, I didn't see any, I didn't see the applause. I didn't see the- Oh, there was loads, there was I loads. Didn't see the applause. Let me see, oh, <laughs> look yeah. at that. Yeah. Look Everybody, at that. me. Rosie is not impressed. She's not applauding at all. I, and Philip's not impressed. And no, he's not impressed. And Lynn's not impressed. And Sue, Sue. Oh, Sue is sort of half. Ha and Maureen is sort of half, half clapping. See, I can see you all. I can see you all. <laughs> I can spy into your front rooms. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> so, Con, the competition. Oh, competition, yeah. And, uh, the competition this week is, I don't know if anybody will be able to 
answer it, but the question is, can you name any house that Deck lived in? Name any house that Deck lived in. Uh, there's uh, loads of them because every couple of years he used to move. He used to do barn conversions when barn conversions were very. Oh, good. Philip. Philip has got it right. Leyland's barn. Leyland's barn. But Philip, you were on last week chatting away, chatting away. Uh, Stanton Pryor. No, Lynn knows Stanton Pryor. Okay, anybody? John Hutchinson knows. They've been on before as well. The two of you have been on before. Anybody else? Come on. Most of them began with old. There was old Leyland's barn. There was the old pear tree. The old, old, old. Anybody going to get it? Oh dear, oh dear. I don't think anybody's going to get this. No, I don't think anybody is going to get this con. So I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go on to gallery view and I'm going to take... Pick pick of a number, con. Six. Six, okay. And six, no, that's too many. One, between one and five. Okay, four. <laughs> four, okay, and then between one and four. Three. Three. It's John Leyland. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> Carol, we haven't spoken to you for a while. Carol Furs. Unmute yourself there, Carol. Unmute Hi. yourself. Are you unmuted? That's, that's lovely. Carol, is there anything you want to ask Con and I? Any funny story you've got? Any memory of being with us or anyth anything at all that you want to talk to us? Over to you, Carol. Um... What are your memories of appearing at um, Torbay at the theatres in Torquay and Paynton? Oh, the wonderful. Went back to seventies and eighties. Yeah, because uh, down there, <clears throat> my my dear friends were were down there, Derek Hardy and his lovely wife Helen. Uh, Helen is still we keep in touch all the time. Uh, and it was it was lovely down there because every time we went down, uh, as you know, Derek worked for Ponton's holiday camps, and he always gave me a wonderful, wonderful cottage to to live in while we were down there, and <clears throat> I we had some great times, great times in down in Devon. Carol, tell us what are your ideas and views and memories of Torbay in the district. Oh, well, I lived down here, not in Torbay, um, just the other side of Exeter. But um, I saw you, the first time I saw you was in Paynton in 1975. Mm. Um, my parents and I tried to get into the uh, second show, because you did two shows then, it was a Sunday. <coughs> Couldn't get in, full house. Only just managed to get into the first one, sat right at the front, and, well, the rest is history. It was amazing. And my, one of my memories is seeing you at the end doing um, I'll See You In My Dreams when Con will remember um, when, when you're at home in bed tonight, I'll be in bed too. And the audience will go, ooh. <laughs> you remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah. We used to finish the show with that song. That's right, yeah. 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 We, we used to, it was... Uh, on one of the television programs that we did, <clears throat> we used it for as a signature tune, and so we thought it'd be lovely uh, on our stage shows as well. I'll see you in my dreams. Mm. Hold you in my BBC dreams. Two series. John Leyland says that's lovely. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. lovely, Carol. Thank Great you memory. very much for those memories. That's yeah. wonderful, and we've got a little surprise for everybody now, Carol. A little surprise. You can mute yourself up now, Carol. That'd be lovely. I, that's good girl, good girl. Uh, John Hutchinson says, I remember that same line from a Sunday night show you guys did at the Futurist Theatre. Yeah, we use that opening for a while. We tend to do that. We get a good opening. It's usually from a TV show or something we design. At, at the moment, we're, we've got to change it now because we've been using it for a few years. 
Uh, and we got a big uh, film star, actually, to uh, the, the guy who was in Camp Rock, Camp Rock 1 and Camp Rock 2, Daniel Fathers. He did the voiceover for the latest uh, introduction we've got. But we'll, I've got some ideas for a new one. I've got some ideas for a new one. Never short of ideas. And we'll do a new one for you. But Con, would you like, I'm just going to get my guitar ready, Con. Okay. You get your guitar and uh, <clears throat> I'll clear my voice. <clears throat> why I'm does good. Con? Why does a guitar strap always manage to wrap itself around something when you're going to get it? Oh, I don't know. Well, <laughs> okay. My guitar strap. I, I've taken it off my guitar for. Good, good. That's so listen. Is. Introduce the next song. Well, right now, uh, this is a song that we recorded and uh, wasn't good. Then we recorded it again and it wasn't good. And we recorded it again and it wasn't good. And then we went to Johnny Keating. And Johnny Keating, we were sent to see him and he was very, very busy he was at the time. And he had a little tape recorder. He said, right, sing, sing the song you want to record. So we sang it into the little recorder he had <clears throat> and he said right I'll, I'll buy now lads i'll see you on the session and all he did was add strings add strings to the arrangement and we went in gave the music out to the musicians and said right we're doing this song i said if you record it four times already surely you know it by now <laughs> so i knew we recorded and it sounded something like this <laughs> Smile for me, my darling. I'm in heaven when I see you smile. See you smile. Smile for me, my darling. My darling. And though every all the while I can see you, Diane. You have lighted the road leading home. Oh, pray for me when you can. When you can. But no matter. Wherever I'm wrong, smile for me, my dying. I'm in heaven when I see you smile, see you smile, smile for me, my dying. very first number one. Oh, I'm still in a cave. No, I'm not. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for applauding. <laughs> that was the fourth in our list of hits, yeah. was it? And Barry Miles says, well done, boys. And let me switch on to gallery view and see the huge applause. Look at that applause. Yeah. 
That's, that's going to look lovely in the edit, John. That's going to be lovely in the edit. And Marjorie, wait till you see the edit. Tune in tomorrow, YouTube tomorrow, and you'll see it all in full gloss. Because it was breaking up a little bit for me, I'm sure. You can stop applauding now. Please, you can stop <laughs> applauding now. <laughs> I love applause. Well, listen, Con, uh, you're going to tell us what we're going to do next week. Well, and uh, I am going to do something. Con doesn't even know I'm going to do this. Yeah. Because well. honestly, I do feel that I'll walk with God is probably the best thing that we have ever done. And if you don't so. mind, just indulge me. Indulge me. <laughs> We're going to do it different this week. We're going to play out on this which i i really mean this i mean in, in every respect in the orchestration in the voices in everything it's just and there's no auto-tune in sight no auto-tune in sight philip so listen enjoy this as we say goodbye <laughs> I'll walk with God from this day on His helping hand I'll lean upon This is my prayer, my humble plea May the Lord be ever with me There is no death Though I am so dim There is no fear When I'm near to Him I'll Goodbye from me and goodbye from him and goodbye from me. Two shows next week, next month. Oh wow! Yeah. One is open to the public, and I think this one on the twenty-third. I think is a private do, but I'm not sure. 
I'll have to find out. I'll let you know next week. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's the nicest thing that anyone's ever done for me. I may sound a double dutch, but my delight is such. I feel as if a losing war has been 